Before I start, I'd just like to make it very clear that I am by no means a professional. In fact, I'm probably the opposite of a professional. <laughs> if you are struggling and feel like you need proper support and medical intervention, there is always someone available. I will pop some links down below that might help you out and just remember you're never alone. Please seek medical advice if you need it. But with that, let's get on. Life gets a lot sometimes. We all know it. Sometimes big things happen and sometimes it's the little things that topple us over the edge. In fact, for me, quite often, it is the little things that topple me over the edge. Like for instance, the fact the camera is wiggling. Hopefully you can't notice it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I cope quite well with big things happening. I can keep quite a cool head, but the second something little happens, I'm not very equipped to deal with them. I think what happens with me is that little things pile up and they become big things. Things like the fact I didn't do the washing up the night before, or I've got a little tiny piece of work that just seems like the biggest thing in the entire world. We all do it. We all experience stress. I believe everybody has the capacity for stress and it's just where we put it and what it goes into. Sometimes we feel like we just cannot cope and that is normal. It doesn't feel great, in fact, it feels the opposite. And sometimes we get a bit overwhelmed. Today, in fact, is a prime example of this. I just wanted to curl up and go back to bed, but instead I forced myself to put some makeup on and set up this video. I still feel a bit wobbly. I still feel like this video maybe has no point or that it won't help anybody. But I hope that if it helps just one person, then it was worth it. And my pushing through that anxious period will be worth it. Recently, I've been looking into a lot about coping mechanisms, especially when things get a bit overwhelming. And I cannot recommend the book, Why Has Nobody Told Me This Before by Julie Smith. This book, I can't quite explain how truly inspiring and helpful it is. She has basically condensed a lot of coping strategies and a lot of explanations as to why we might be feeling a certain way into a book. Uh, she is a licensed therapist and a good one. Her whole ethos is that she wants to make therapy accessible to everybody. And obviously she's only one person. She can't see thousands and thousands of individuals at a time. So she decided to condense her work and her research into a little book and I cannot recommend it enough. I can pop it down in a link below. I'm just recommending it. I've got no promotion or anything on it. It's just a really good book. It's ideal for those maybe needing a reason or finding an explanation about how they might be feeling and finding some skills and some habits they can get into to help prevent a spiral or to help just build that little bit of resilience and motivation back up in your life. Sometimes books aren't what we need and sometimes we need a little bit of push by a video or a podcast or something we can just listen to and that is where I come in to waffle away. <laughs> I've been on a massive self-development journey in the last year or so and I have found some coping strategies for when I simply cannot cope anymore and I'd like to share them with you and I hope they help somewhat if you're in a bit of a rut and just feel like you can't cope because you can and it's important to remind yourself of that. If I've said it once, I've said it a million times, bullet journaling is by far one of the main things that I do to stop myself getting into a spiral of stress and overwhelmingness. Overwhelm? Don't think that's a word, but we'll go with it. <laughs> Bullet journaling helps me to collect uh, everything I've got to do or things I've got to remember in a month and write it all down. It also helps me to pop down on paper stresses I have and things I might not necessarily voice to anybody else because there's no pressure to share it. It's just for you and you alone. I have a whole video on effortless bullet journaling if you would like to check it out. Again, no pressure to do so. This is a pressure-free zone. <laughs> art has helped me in more ways than I can tell you. I recently set up my own art business. I don't like that word. <laughs> website website i recently set up a place where i can actually sell my art and for a long time i didn't feel like i could call myself an artist i felt like a fraud but then people actually kind of gave me nice feedback about my art and it was really lovely and although you don't need anybody else to tell you you're doing something right sometimes it's nice to have that art is definitely my outlet and a way of expressing myself in an ambiguous way and i really enjoy doing it and i'm grateful that although my mind gives me anxiety and all sorts of negative things 
it's all worth it if it gives me art at the end of the day. I'm not very good at talking, or I am and I talk too much and I scare people off or get a bit overwhelming for other people. I definitely need to know when it's okay to talk about things and when I just need to vocalise them. That's why therapy is so brilliant, and if you have access to it, I highly recommend it. There are therapies online, and there are also charities to help you out if you're not in a financial position to pay for therapy yourself. There is always somebody there to help. Talking is by far one of the best things you can do if you've got a lot going on, and sometimes a problem shared is a problem halved. Being active has also helped me a lot. I've recently started swimming and as you all know, if you know me, I love a walk. I love going outside and just walking for hours. <laughs> Maybe it's just because my sense of direction is so bad that I get lost and I've just convinced myself I like it. Anything active helps your brain to re-channel what it's thinking about. And yeah, if you've got a lot going on, it can sometimes be difficult to find the time to do anything like that, but sometimes Time scheduling is very useful. If you schedule an hour in for a walk or some form of exercise, you then might start to block your time generally and realise you have more time than you thought. But everyone's days are different. Do what's right for you. And if exercising an hour is too long for you, maybe just try a 15 minute stretching session at your desk if you've got a lot on. And this is a bit of advice I never thought I'd give. So let me prepare myself with a sip of tea. Sometimes the right thing to do is just curl up in your duvet and relax. I know this might seem painful and a lot of you are probably flinching at this idea if you've got a lot on, but sometimes you just need that half an hour power nap or that 20 minutes to watch a show you really like. Life is really short and I say this all the time, but it can feel even shorter if you pack your days full of solid working and stressful events and things you've got to do. Yeah, a power nap might seem trivial, but I tell you a power nap has helped me more times than I care to admit. Again, I know it's probably a privilege to be able to do that but I think it's important that you give yourself an excuse to stop sometimes. If it gets to 10 o'clock on a Friday night and you're still working that probably means you need to have a break. Having a break is so important and it's a luxury I'll give you that but it is important for your mental health and when you feel like you can't cope sometimes your body forces you to stop so it's better to stop it in its tracks and give it a break before it gets to the stopping point itself. Basically, I think resting and having a little bit of a duvet 20 minutes is better than a breakdown. Putting it bluntly, that might be too blunt. You guys know me now. I'm quite <laughs> blunt. <laughs> we all lead very different lives. I could give you advice until I was blue in the face and none of it might fit into your schedule. We all have very different schedules. There are over 7 billion people on this planet and none of our lives are the same. But incorporating some things in your day, even just aspects of them, and tweaking them to make them fit you is really useful and might even help you prevent burnout or a breakdown. You are stronger than you know and stronger than you could ever possibly believe you are. It's just important to know that you have control sometimes. I really hope you find something useful in this video, but what do you do when you feel everything's a bit overwhelming? You are all so lovely in the comments and all always give advice and a helping hand to each other and I'd love to hear more of that. So please do pop them down in the comments and let me know what you do when you're struggling. Please do like this video and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Please do look after yourselves and lots of love and sending loads of virtual hugs to all of you. Unless you're not a hugger, then a virtual pat on the back. <laughs>